Hello Lions fans and welcome to the second installment of the 2013-14 Winter Sports Season Previews. My name is Jack Zola, Director of Athletic Communications here at Malloy, and we are joined today by head men's basketball coach Charlie Marquardt. Charlie, thanks for joining me today. Yeah, I appreciate it. Of course. So coach, let's start off with last season. <clears throat> Entering into this season, was it a different type of feel for you and your staff prepping your players? As we all know, last year you had the best finish in program history. Just a quick recap, you finished 18-10 and 10 with an ECC record of 13-5. and 5. Two weeks ago, the ECC preseason poll came out. You were ranked third in the conference. So was it a different type of offseason and preseason for you and your players? I wouldn't look at it as a, a different way that we prepared. Um, we worked hard throughout the offseason. Um, we monitored our players in the same way. And, um, you know, really work ethic is at the, the denominator of how we do right. things in the offseason, whether it be the coaching staff side or the players' side that they're uh, in tune to their improvements. All right, well, now let's dive right into this year's squad. Um, I want to go position by position, and maybe you can give us what, to look, what fans can look for in each group, uh, how you're going to use them, their strengths, what they bring to the court, what to expect from the new guys that the fans haven't seen yet. Mm -hmm. uh, so let's start off with the guards. Returning from last year are sophomores Brandon Williams and Maurice Gatson, as well as junior Matt McLeod. And joining the team this year is freshman Jalen Morris. Yeah, Brandon Williams uh, is really a key motor to our team. Not only does he have the basketball in his hands, um, and therefore is, is automatically a leader on the court, um, but he's also uh, the start and pivot to our defense because he's the front part of you know, of what addresses their team offense. So uh, Brandon has a lot of responsibility. Um, as a freshman, I thought he did a good job. You know, we're always looking to continue to get better and improve. So, um, you know, we're losing Jimmy Nolan, who was a captain for us last year at that guard spot. You know, we're looking to him uh, to do more and more from a leadership perspective. So uh, he had a good off season. Um, so, I, I think that he, he's going to be a key guy once again for us, and it allows the wings to, to get it going. Right. You know. um, Matt McLeod, uh, you know, right in tune with what we were just saying about Brandon. Brandon sort of feeds off to the, to the wings. Uh, Matt McLeod is, is really going to be another key guy. He was a guy who was very flexible last year. Uh, in some games he started, some games he came off the bench. He's going to start for us this year. And... Um, He's proven that. You know, he's a junior who's given us good minutes. Uh, freshman year, he was uh, rookie of the year, runner-up. And uh, like I said, he had a good year last year. So we're expecting some good things from him, mostly because of his seasoning. Um, you know, he can shoot the basketball. He can get to the rim. Uh, we like putting him on key offensive men on the, on the other teams. So um, we expect him also to be, to be pretty good. Again, being a junior helps. Right. Um, Maurice Gatson, I believe, was another person yes. that you mentioned. Sophomore. Um, Maurice Gatson, I, I really feel um, is going to is going to be going into this year and is unsung, but I think people will really appreciate how much he's gotten better this mm -hmm. year. And he even gotten he he got better during the year last year during practice. So uh, we're excited about some of the uh, the minutes that he can give us in supporting Brandon at that at that point guard spot. He's very athletic. His decisions uh, have improved, and um, you know during the summer league that uh, they all joined, he really uh, did a nice job out in North Sport, and um, you know and, and really during the uh, preseason and uh, the first couple weeks of practice, he's done a nice job. So. Uh, and what about Jalen Morris? Jalen Morris, the freshman. Um, yeah. Jim, new face. What can the fans expect? Yeah, he's a new face, and uh, he's going to bring uh, really a high level of skill. Um, he's long, he's athletic, uh, can shoot it or get to the rim. Um, because of his length, he's, he can be pretty good defensively, mm -hmm. and his footwork is good. You know, for a young player coming out of a high school, um, to expect good fundamentals and footwork, you know, is not an automatic anymore, uh, but he does. Um, he's just going to get better and better as he gets stronger and stronger and, and becomes more confident. But uh, he's helped us already, and uh, he definitely shores up our uh, backcourt. All right. 
Next up, uh, we have the largest group on your roster, the mm. forwards. Yeah. And I think it's easier just to break it down by class. So can you talk uh, first first about the sophomores? Uh, one returning, Kevin Bowles, yeah. and one newcomer, Chuck Zabunse. Mm -hmm. Kevin Bowles doesn't do anything really wrong. He is excellent to the rim. He can shoot the basketball. He's a good defender. He's knowledgeable. You know, you can sort of tic-tac every single area of the game and say, well, Kevin Bowles does that well. And uh, what Kevin has improved with over the summer is, uh, I think, his shooting. You know, he, he's improved that, and, and that's going to be important. You know, uh, to have uh, depth at the guard spot and at the forward spot and have a lot of players who can shoot the basketball um, is key to our wings and also our inside play. You know, you have to sort of open things up. Kevin Bowles, I think, has improved that. He's a very strong player. Um, physically, you know, he's strong. And uh, I think he's also improved on his ball handling. So I, I think he's a guy who's a returning sophomore who, again, uh, will help us. Right. And, um, you know, I'm excited for what he brings. He, had, he was nagging with injuries last year. And uh, whether it be the ankle and a couple other things, he's come back pretty mm -hmm. healthy. So, uh, like I said, I'm excited about yeah. uh, potentially what he can bring. Right. Uh, Chucks, Chucks is um, a, a tough, hard-nosed player, and uh, Chucks is, is probably going to spend uh, a little bit more time at that five spot, um, supporting Tyler at that five spot, than the four spot. Because again, at that four spot, you have Rich and and, and you have Miles and you have Kevin. Uh, Chucks is very physical. Uh, I think his defense is strong and tough. He's willing to take charges. He's willing to really play uh, tough basketball in the paint. Um, that's something that's going to help us. You know, we are always focused on how are we rebounding. Rebounding is the key to our fast break or controlling the basketball defensively. So um, him three-quarter in the block and doing things such as that and, and uh, you know, sprinkling in some offense here and there with some rebound putbacks and, and uh, inside play. And some moves. Uh, I, I think the uh, I think the Malloy family, uh, you know, comes to the games. They'll appreciate his toughness. Right. Okay. And then you did mention uh, Rich Zoller, Miles Prendergast before two of the three juniors uh, on your team in terms of the forwards. The other being John uh, Petroselli. Anything else you want to add about Zoller, Prendergast, and obviously, please speak a little bit about uh, Petroselli. Yeah. Um, Miles. Miles had an excellent off season. Um, more importantly, I think he's had a, a strong preseason. Mm -hmm. um, so at this point, Miles is going to start for us at that right. four spot, and, and he's earned that. Um, he's a very smart player, yeah. and um, he's very athletic. And, and what we try to do with Miles is to get him to do more and more. Right. Um, defensively, he's always aware of where he has to be on the court. He knows uh, his surroundings, where he has to be, what's the right play to make. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, our job is really just to keep making him more and more instinctual mm. on that basketball court. Mm -hmm. um, again, another person who's improved his skills over the uh, off season, and um, you know he's a he's a real complimentary player. Yeah. Um, like a, a great stat sheet for him might be ten points, seven rebounds, five assists, three steals. Might not be twenty five points. Yeah. But that's okay. We don't necessarily need that, but we do need activity from him. And um, you know we're gonna. I think we're gonna get that from him this year. I he think he's contributing in a lot of different areas. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And uh, you know he can handle the basketball too. Right. Even though he plays the four, and uh, similar to Kevin Bowles, mm -hmm. you know they can handle the basketball at that four spot, and that helps. Sometimes you can have a small four right. that can do that. And um, so, you know, someone who can play inside and also handle the basketball definitely creates flexibility and, and creates more matchup issues for for an opponent. Right. Uh, Rich Zola uh, has had a good preseason too. Uh, he's also had a good off season. He worked very hard, weight training wise, mm -hmm. in the in the off season. Um, you know, he's going to have the ability and, and, and going to be given the ability to score a lot for us. He's one of those guys who has an excellent touch for a big man. Um, he also has the ability to score from the perimeter, not just inside. Right. So uh, we want to give him. Uh, opportunity to score inside and out this year. So I think you'll see a little bit more of that. Um, you know, defensively, I think he does a pretty good job. I think his lateral quickness has gotten better. Um, you know, obviously we need some uh, rebounding from someone that big. Right. Um, you know, so, uh, but we think 
being at that four spot uh, and, and having Chucks and, and Tyler at that five spot uh, will give him some matchup opportunities for him offensively. And um, so I'm excited to see what he can, yeah. what he can do in that spot and, and, and know that that's going to be the spot we're going to use him at. John Petroselli is, the, I believe, the last person yeah. you mentioned. You know, John. John's going to be at that three spot. You know, a lot of the time. You know, small forward. And um, you know, when you speak of John Petroselli, everyone talks about the accolades right. uh, that he's earned, and he has. Right. You know, he truly has earned that. Um, I think of John, and I think of how hard he practices. I think of John, and I think about how each year he's become a better and better leader for us. I think of John and I say, he's a blue collar guy. And, and as soon as we drift away from that, then he's not gonna be as effective. So he needs to always remain grounded and realize that I'm just gonna work really hard. I'm gonna play both ends of the court because he never takes a playoff. That's the beauty mm -hmm. of him. If he continues with that mindset, right. you know, he's gonna have a great year for us. No reason to get caught up on all that other stuff. That'll happen based on how hard he works. Right. And, and it's a tribute to what he's done, and that's great. But we're not going to focus you know, on that. And um, that's important of how we treat him. But he also has to have that mindset. Right. But uh, he plays both ends of the court. Uh, we like to get him uh, the basketball at the end of the games because you know, he's become a good decision maker. Um, He's our captain as far as uh, defense is concerned on the court. I rely on him mm -hmm. for input um, because he's so active and he's good. And his steals come out of activity, not out of taking high risks. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, John, John is definitely a motor for us. Right. And um, him, I, I mentioned Brandon as well. Yeah. And, um, you know, all of our players have to have a motor. But uh, John, John, really has done a great job for us, and I, I'm hopeful for a, a really good senior year for him. Yeah, speaking back uh, on those accolades last year, just a couple, all Met team, all ECC first team, um, and obviously people are expecting big things from this year, as he was two weeks ago named the ECC preseason player of the year. Right. So fans will definitely be excited to see what he's going to bring to the table this year. And just rounding out the forwards uh, are two freshmen on the team. Joe Campe and your son Charlie Marquardt the fourth. So can you yeah. just speak about the rookies a little bit, please? Sure. Um, Charlie Marquardt, um, I think, will help us. Uh, when, where, um, which game in, during the season, I'm not sure. But what he gives us is a, a, a really good scoring threat from the perimeter. Uh, he also gives us smart basketball. He makes good decisions. Um, Areas where he's continuing to work hard on in the preseason is, is his defense, getting into gaps, right. um, stopping people, um, just being small with the basketball, not too many dribbles. Good shooters really have to, you know, pass the basketball and then move again. And, um, you know, but with that risk and threat to an opponent from the perimeter, mm -hmm. again, allows our inside game right. to work, you know, so people can't double down. It allows John to hit a gap with guys or, you know, without rolling off, you know, and helping. Right. Um, Charlie and Jalen, you know, I sort of put them together. They're, they're playing against really great players yeah. that are ahead of them now in practice. So they're getting better from that. Playing against Matt McLeod, right. playing against John, playing against Kevin Bowles, all these guys. Right. So they're getting better and they're getting closer to all that. And it's, uh, you know, we want a, c a competitive practice right. and competitive nature so that we all get better. So when, where, all these young guys, you know, find their way, usually it takes care of itself through a season. It's right. such a long season, 28 games we have, you know, uh, in the regular season yeah. this year. So um, that'll all take care of itself, but I, I really think that, you know, he will help us. Right. And, um, you know, uh, I'm, I'm hopeful for that because the more depth and balance we have, you know, I think the more successful. Right. Um, Joe Campe has uh, has been our you know was our walk on. He was mm -hmm. added late, mm -hmm. so he he didn't really have the opportunity to do preseason right. training. So he was a little bit behind in, in how we do things. But he's come in with a great work ethic, mm -hmm. and, and he's come in, um, you know, and he's pretty talented. You know, uh, out of East Meadow, he's um, you know he was a key contributor for them over there. He's a big, strong guy. Right. 
and um, he's picked up the plays. He's found an opportunity for himself to prove to his teammates first that he belongs here, mm -hmm. which is always the first proof before yeah. it even becomes me. Right. Teammates need to be trustworthy in you. He's done that. And, um, you know, uh, the, uh, the job of a walk-on is, um, is definitely one where uh, no one sees a lot of the work, except sometimes the coaching staff. So he just has to put in the time every day, get better, and, um, you know, when and if the opportunity comes, Right. Hopefully he's ready to do that. Yeah, yeah I, I find it interesting walking around campus uh, from last year. You see a men's basketball poster, family, the yeah. word "families" on it, yeah. and uh, one of your videos before the playoffs, mm -hmm. uh, they were showcasing that you guys yeah. really are a family together. And I think it's going to be a really interesting dynamic that mm -hmm. you know yourself and your longtime assistant coach uh, yeah. Pat Morris actually. Yeah. do have family yeah. members on a team. It's going to be pretty yeah. cool for the fans and just everybody involved. Yeah. Um, you know, we, we talk about family all the time. We talk about staying together and focused, you know, on and off the court. And, um, you know, those aren't just words. We really live by that. Yeah. And uh, we believe that, you know, that's the way to go through four years with a group. Right. Um, you know, these guys, uh, it's sort of the best years of their lives. Right. Not, just, not just winning basketball yeah. games, but uh, the memories. Right, right. Um, you know, we eat together as a, as a team every Friday night. And... Um, you know, there's just, you know, so much time that you spend with each other. And, um, you know, you know, and we do have a dynamic with, uh, with two sons and, and um, you know, but we have, we have 12 sons, right. you know, here during these years. And uh, each one is, is, is equally important. And, uh, you know, we're excited to, to make the Malloy College Athletic Department and, and community proud right. that how we do things you know, uh, imitates, you know, their values. Right. So however we carry ourselves on and off the court really, it, you know, goes back to what administration has built already for us. Coach, rounding out the roster, you have one big listed on your team, one true center. Right. Um, what do you, ex I know you mentioned his name before, but what are you expecting out of Tyler Hammett this year, out of his senior campaign? I think Tyler Hammett had a great offseason. He stayed down here, worked with his teammates. He didn't go back home. Uh, he was really committed to um, really getting uh, stronger, getting quicker, improving his conditioning. So he's had that commitment, um, you know, really for a couple of years now. But he really, I thought, took it to the next level. He's one of the hardest workers in practice. Um, he's uh, really a, a guy with a great attitude. Anytime you try to correct in practice, he's always willing and listening. Yeah. So I'm hopeful and excited for him because he's just a gentleman, you know, on and off the court. And, and, and we just want him to uh, be as successful as, as, as he can be. Right. So um, we're, we're hopeful for, you know, not necessarily statistics, you know, although, you know, everyone will see that, but we just want him to be really active right. and be in as many plays as possible. Because when you get your 6'10 guy in as many plays as possible, it, it, it really makes our team quicker, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. and, and he's pretty agile. It, it, and he's in more plays, most likely then we're probably in a good position. Right, right. Uh, his finish moves have gotten better. Um, obviously from a rebounding perspective, we, we have expectations from that mm -hmm. because that's just activity again, defensively. That starts our offense up and again secures our, you know, secures our defensive ball control, which we talked about earlier. Right. We spend a lot of time talking about ball control, you know, shot selection, uh, turnover control, right. Rebounding, you know, those are the keys, I think, to, to basketball. So uh, he's right in the middle of all those yeah. things. All right, well, getting back to uh, the task at hand for you, which starts this weekend as you uh, tip off your 2013 to 14 season. Charlie, what are your expectations going into the season? Right. Uh, maybe you could share with uh, the fans uh, what are some of your goals, both maybe individually for players as well as for the team as a whole, that you've discussed with your players and coaching staff? Yeah. I would say individually, you know, I've probably spoken to them mm -hmm. through the summer about, you know, what role, and I, I don't want to pigeonhole role, right. but what goals they have as players. Mm -hmm. And um, as soon as we get to September, individual discussions cease, mm -hmm. other than how are they going to improve the team. Okay. So that, that's all been done, and, and we have goals through the season of right. how they're going to make the team better. Right. Um, 
as far as team goals, uh, I, I think every Division II, you know, program, you know, Division One, Division Three, want to go to the NCAA's. We're no different. Uh, you know, we were a couple of games away from that last year, um, so we want that. You know, we're we're hopeful for that. Uh, we're hopeful if we get in, we obviously want to get to a regional, and um, so we have our, our mind on that. And uh, we don't we don't feel it's lofty, uh, but we don't want to shoot down here just to get in playoffs. We we want to take next steps right. like like everyone else. Right. And um, but the important fact of that is we can't play like that. We have to take each individual game. Right one step at a time, build to that game with good practices, right. and take it step by step. And that's going to be the key, is not to look at it from a big level, but just a step by step level of how we're practicing leading up to a game. And if we do those process goals every day, then we're prepared to do the best we can in that game. Right. Now, if, if, if our reach or our potential wasn't that based on and if we did the best we could then that's going to be you know that's going to be what we did um, but uh, certainly that's that's the built and excitement that we want to get to uh, as a program so coach how do you uh, view the conference going mm -hmm. into this season who are the teams that I know every team plays tough and everything but what what's the real the teams and the programs that you're looking out for that you could see finishing mm -hmm. near the top well, I'm concerned about everyone. I know every coach says that, yeah. but I really believe that. If you take a look at the spread um, in points um, between a win and a loss last year in our conference, mm -hmm. it's about four points. Right. So every game can come down to a couple of possessions. Right. You know, um, and that's not lost in our one-loss record. You really have to be good, you know, and, and that margin of error, you have to try to make it mm -hmm. wider. Mm -hmm. um, so we, that's why we have to get better. Um, the teams in our league have gotten better. I think if you were to go down, up and down the list of all the teams in our league, I think everyone has gotten better. Now, we're also met with different challenges. A lot of teams have, have a new coaching staff. So there's new preparation for, uh, you know, right. four teams, I believe. Right. And, um, you know, I, I think that's something that we're going to have to figure out as the season wears on. Uh, obviously, uh, Bridgeport and Post, uh, have been selected by all the coaches right. as two teams ahead of us, right. and um, I'm sure deservedly so. And so that's in our minds. But you know, um, to be honest with you, I, I don't look at a game against anyone differently than anyone else. We're, we're not there yet to think of anyone, you know, to play someone differently right. or look at someone differently in our league right. than someone else. Right. You know, we prepare the same way for every single team. So. Um, you know, and, and really our focus in practice is just about continuing to get better. Mm -hmm. I have a lot of respect for every coach in this league. Right. Uh, I see what everyone is up against because we go through it. Right. And, um, you know, uh, that's, an, uh, that's a reason why I enjoy coaching so much is because of the challenges that, you know, the coaches in this league uh, give you. Right. All right, and finally, Charlie, you know, you, you've been at Malloy a while. Right. Um, you've been coaching here nearly 20 years. Mm. Um, what is the one motto or, or mantra that as a coach you, you try to follow? Has there been one, um, one thing that you really have tried to preach each year mm -hmm. as you see guys come and go and different types of players come and go? What, what is a coach, what's the foundation of your coaching philosophy? I would say you have to treat every player that comes in your program as, as a family member. And, and thus, that's where that family, you gotta treat them right. Yeah. Because without the student athlete, you don't have a program. Right. And so you gotta treat them and care for them. Right. And um, there's no substitute for that. Um, you gotta teach them the game the right way. You gotta teach them sportsmanship. You gotta teach them as much about life skills as the game because one day they'll be alumni and if you're really building a true program it's not about a four-year clip it's 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 about those 20 years and, and, and coming back um, I really believe that you know a good coach gets them to their maximum potential 
whatever level of talent that you have, if you would have them reach their maximum potential, then as a coach, I feel you can walk away and say, you've done a good job with them. Mm -hmm. So what that does is make sure that you've got to do a good job recruiting, because you've got to get good players in so that, you know, that they're good enough to win your basketball games. And that's always the, you know, that's why recruiting is the lifeline, and, and that you have good people. So I would say that family is really a, a, a mantra right. for us. And I would say that caring for them and, and treating them the right way and teaching the game the right way right. is what I look at. And, um, you know, I want to, you know, say that our players have worked really hard so far this preseason before we get into wins and losses. And so is our coaching staff, Coach Morris and Coach Piscina. So right. I just want to say thank you to them so far before we get into the season for all their hard work and effort. And, uh, you know, uh, as a group, on behalf of them, the players and the coaches, we're, we're excited to get going. Right. Coach, last year the fans really came out and they supported you, and they just had a great time going to your games, following your team throughout the mm -hmm. season. As we prepare to start another season this weekend, what's one thing you would tell the Malloy faithful? Well, I, first thing I would say is thank you. I, I would say thank you for all their support and their, their cheering and, and, and just being there for us. Right. And, um, you know, that's something to me that's a special bond built by our players on campus. Mm -hmm. Because if our players really are supported by their friends and, and their family right. and um, teachers, administration, right. then they're really doing a good job outside of the court. And that, that makes people want to come in. Right. That's one thing. And also they're playing the game the right way. They're playing the game the, with the right style. They're being unselfish. Mm -hmm. So in a tune with that family concept, being unselfish, you know, I, I think always, like the pass is always more exciting than the shot. Mm -hmm. People love seeing a great pass. But playing that style, I, I think, is, um, is something that I think the fans like to see. So really, I, to the fans, I'm, I'm excited and hopeful that we're going to continue playing like that. And um, if we do, then I, I know it's going to be another exciting year. And, um, you know, just as they are, I'm, I'm hopeful for uh, a great year. Right. All right, fans, well, that will wrap it up for our 2013-14 men's basketball season preview with head coach Charlie Marquardt. Uh, please remember that the Lions kick off their season November 9th when they play Southern Connecticut State in Bridgeport at 8 p.m. The home opener for Malloy will be against Philadelphia University in non-conference action November 23rd at 4 p.m. So, Charlie, thanks for joining me. I thanks appreciate it. Me. Thank you for watching, fans, and please stay tuned for the next season preview when I sit down with head track and field coaches Keely Coco and Danny Nod to discuss their upcoming season. Have a good night, everybody, and always, let's go Lions!